Bonsoir et bienvenue à toutes et à tous. Donc merci de nous rejoindre pour cette nouvelle conférence autour du sujet du leadership et du corps au travail. Notre invité ce soir fait partie de ceux qui ont créé l'approche somatique appliquée au leadership, le leadership embodiment. Mesdames, messieurs, merci d'accueillir chaleureusement Wendy Palmer. We are pleased to welcome you, Wendy Palmer. The process has been informed by Aikido, the Japanese martial art. It's a non-violent art and also mindfulness. Uh, I've been doing both for over 45 years. And the principles, I think, are very helpful to help people live more into their potential and uh, be able to have a very strong presence because it is said that at least 70% of a communication can be nonverbal. So what are we communicating, not just with our words, but with the rest of ourselves? And it teaches people to be able to um, be more inclusive and to be able to listen more skillfully and also how to be able to say what's true for us without being annoying or aggressive. So we work with the body because when we tighten up, when we fire flexor muscles and we contract, it releases chemicals in the body. And one of those chemicals is cortisol. And what cortisol does is it shuts down the part of our brain that governs big picture thinking, creativity, innovation, and risk taking. And so we get a narrowing of perception, we call it. We have a very small mind when we're stressed. What's interesting and why it's a shortcut is when we fire different muscle groups, we actually get different chemicals released in the body. When we get tight and we close, we have cortisol, and then we feel separate. When we become open, um, we get some testosterone, and then we feel confident. And when we think of inspiration, we have oxytocin, and that's a connecting chemical, and then our brain starts to naturally think of connection, naturally think of big picture thinking. So we use these elements so that people don't have to go right into their uncomfortable place. So we're going to be looking at these three leadership competencies that we work with in organizations. The first one is inclusiveness. It's the message we're in this together. When we go to work, sometimes our uh, people in our teams and our coworkers are not part of us. They're other. We're very nice to them, we're very polite, but you're there and I'm here and we're separate. So the real practice of leadership and to be effective in being able to invite people to look at our ideas is to have the message we actually are in this together, non-verbally. And then the really important thing is to be able to do it in stressful situations when people are unpleasant. So we have um, particular exercises that we teach people to do, making a contrast between what happens when we feel stressed and we go into our normal pattern, which is to separate and be tight and try to control a situation. Uh, we teach people how to be relaxed and be open and see possibilities. Um, when people are listening to something that's a criticism, we give them very specific exercises on how to be able to listen to that criticism. You know, the word that's always loaded is feedback. <laughs> So how can we listen to things that we don't like and look for value? And then the third thing is giving people the capacity to um, really say what they think is possible, say their truth, to not be concerned or worried that someone won't like it. Can they say it anyway? And be honest and really uh, bring forth innovation and creativity instead of always trying to fit in. Usually, we speak up and we'll say something if we feel the person will agree with us, if it feels safe. But really, if we want to be innovative, if we want to be creative, if we want to grow our ideas, we need to be able to put our ideas out, even when people don't have a positive response. We do it anyway. And if we do that enough, it's going to gain momentum, and we'll be able to manage this. Now, I think that um, 
It's great that you all are here because uh, this is the, I think, the cutting edge now, working with the body. When I grew up, I'm very old, when I grew up it was all IQ, just intelligence. There was no EQ, there was no emotional thing. Then in the 70s, emotional intelligence became the thing, yeah? HR appeared, and everybody's paying attention to how people are interacting. And now I think the new wave is going to be BQ, body intelligence, because it makes such a difference how we affect each other. What the message is non-verbally makes a huge difference. Well, I think it's beneficial because what it is, it's not just a um, body of information. Uh, information and knowledge is very easy to transmit. And if understanding something was enough, then we could read a book, we could understand what to do, and thereafter we would do it. But we know that's not the case. Many of us understand what we should do. Don't be angry, be patient, mm -hmm. and yet we can't. And so the benefit that people can get is um, learning how to teach their body, which is the limbic system, an alternative to fight, flight, and freeze. So that when people have challenges, instead of going into old patterns, uh, they can have new patterns of being inclusive, listening uh, with more skill, speaking up with more skill. And it's a much better way to do business and to be in our life uh, in the world. Are you willing to do a little exercise together? All right. So to do this exercise, you're going to need to have a partner. So just touch the arm, put your hand on their arm, and then take it off. So when you get touched, notice how much of your attention goes to that touch. It's interesting, because some of you are very good friends. It doesn't, it's not necessarily negative, but your body, the body goes, what's up with that? <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. The brain, the mind, is the neocortex. The body is the limbic system. The brain knows it's my friend, my friend, my, somebody on my team, somebody I know, looks like a nice person. The body, the limbic system goes, what's that? <laughs> because these are not the same. This is two million years younger than this. This is two million years older than this. And this is a very complex system. It sees possibility, creativity, innovation, all of that. This is a very simple system. This system's view is lion, run, graze. That's it. It's very simple. Fight, fight, freeze. And that's why when you get uh, triggered, when you get stressed, your brain tells your body, don't worry, it's not a big deal, but the body's gone. So we've worked with quite a few teams, and one of the approaches that we take with this um, body process is we say we work from the outside in instead of inside out. So in the beginning, people don't have to go inside and connect to their feelings, uh, which can be very challenging uh, to show one's feelings. Instead, we teach people how to take inspiration from people or things that make us feel good, that make us feel strong, that make us feel kind. Um, and we take that from outside of ourselves. For instance, um, I'm a very judgmental person. I have a lot of Irish in me, and I um, am very quick to be annoyed or to judge. So I think of Mother Teresa. She's one of my heroes. I studied her quite a bit. And when I think of her, I get a different feeling. So inspiration, we get it more when we're more open, when we're more connected to something bigger. And we have more energy when we're working on behalf of. You're doing your work for someone because people out there will have more capacity for their communication device, right? And you have energy. If you're just working for yourself, it's okay. But if you're going to really help others, it's a good feeling to know you're helping others. You're giving people a really great piece of technology that they can move forward with. Merci à tous. <laughs>